Hello there and welcome. In this tutorial series, we're going to learn how to build an entire RTS game. RTS, which stands for real-time strategy, is a genre that was very popular when I was a child, so I basically grew up on these games. That's why making this tutorial series is something that I'm really excited about. The game that we're going to develop will have all the elements that you can find in an RTS game. Things like unit control, combat, base building, and resource management. For this tutorial, you should at least have some basic knowledge in Unity and coding. So we're going to start a new project. For this tutorial series, I'm going to use the 2002 LTS version because this is the newest LTS version. And if you don't have this installed, you can simply go to installs, pre-releases, install editor. And over here, you're going to find all of these versions. Then you need to install, it will take some time, but if you want to have the exact version that I have, this is what you need to do. Then we're going to use the 3D URP template. If you don't have this, you will have to download it. And then we're going to give our project a name. And we're going to create the project. So we got our project over here. And before we start, I just want to create a new folder and name it misc and just take all of these unnecessary things and just place them inside. So the asset folder will be a bit more organized. Next, we are going to create some kind of terrain just so we can have a reference to the camera that we're going to create. So we go to 3D object, terrain, and now we have this simple terrain that we're going to change eventually. Now, one of the most important elements in an RTS game is the camera. It's basically a camera that is a top-down camera, but it also has this angle. And this is something that is very common for most RTS games. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to move to the game tab so we can see the view of the camera. We're going to select the camera. And then we're going to change the position a bit, something like 112, 70, and 70. But the most important part is the rotation on the x-axis. We're going to make it 45. So now we have this angle of 45 degrees. Obviously, later we're also going to control the camera. We're going to move it around. For now, we're not going to touch any of these settings because in a different episode, we're going to create a script for the camera that is going to control all of this anyway. So let's go back into the scene view and we want to create our first unit. So in this episode, we want to create some kind of basic movement for our units. We're only going to have one type of unit right now. It's going to be some kind of generic unit. Later, we're going to use this unit to have various units, for example, infantry, tanks, and things like that. So we're going to create a 3D capsule and if we double click on it, we can see that it's rather big and we also want to place it on the terrain. So let's just move it or let's actually just zero the position. And we can see that it's on the ground. Let's move it a bit to be on the terrain. We want to make sure that it has this capsule collider that it gets anyway, but we're going to reduce the radius a bit to be zero point. Next, we want to add a nav mesh agent to our unit so we can move it around. But because it's a new project and it's a new editor version, we are going to have to download this entire package. So we simply go to Window, Package Manager, and we're going to find the AI navigation. And then we need to install it by clicking on this button. It will take a few moments. And now if we select the capsule and we look for nav mesh agent, we can see it over here. For now, we're going to leave these settings as they are. We can change the obstacle avoidance radius to be one. But other than that, we're going to deal with this when we are going to fine tune the unit later and see how it interacts with other units or with other objects. At the moment, we just want to make sure that our unit can move around. Obviously, in an RTS game, you should select the unit either by just clicking on it or dragging this selection box. All of this we're going to do in later episodes. For now, we just want to make sure that our unit is moving. So we're going to create a simple script that is going to sit 
on this capsule and then when we click somewhere on this terrain the unit is going to move so let's create a new c sharp script and we're going to name it unit movement then we're going to drag it on our capsule we can also rename this capsule to be unit and we're going to open up this script by either double clicking on the script itself or clicking over here inside the inspector so inside the unit movement script we're simply going to move the unit so let's delete all of this for now let's have a reference to the camera because we want to shoot a raycast from the camera Now we also want to have a reference to the nav mesh agent, but it's not going to find it because we're not using the AI namespace. So let's just copy this and add the AI package. And now we can look for nav mesh agent. And we also want to have a reference to the layer mask that is going to be the ground itself, because when we shoot the raycast, we want to be able to detect the ground. Then inside the start method, we're going to get the reference to the camera and the agent. So for the camera, we're simply going to reference the main camera. And for the agent, we're going to get this component from our unit. Next, inside the update method, we are going to shoot a raycast and check if we hit the ground. And if we hit the ground, then we're simply going to move the unit to this position. So inside the update method, we simply want to check if the player is clicking on the right mouse button. And if he does, then we're going to create a raycast and it's going to shoot this raycast from the camera to the position of the mouse. And then we check if this ray that we shot is hitting something, and if the thing that it hits is on the ground layer, right? Because we have a reference over here, then we're going to take our agent, which is this unit, and we're going to set the destination to the position of the hit. Now, if we go over here to the inspector, we can see that there is nothing for the ground layer. So we're going to create a new layer. We're going to name it ground. And we're going to set the ground layer to be the layer mask. And we also need to select the terrain and place it on the ground layer. So it will detect when we click on the terrain. Now, if we run the game and we click somewhere on the ground, it will still not work because the ground is not a walkable area. And usually in the previous versions of Unity, we needed to go over here and add this navigation. And then we should just bake this entire nav mesh and it would work. But in the 2002 version, it's already obsolete. It means that soon it will not be supported. So we're going to use the newer version. For this, we go to window AI and we use this navigation that is not obsolete. And if we open it, we can see that we have this panel over here, but for now we don't need to use this and we don't even have a bake option over here. So if we want to make this ground walkable, we should just select the terrain and we need to add a component that is named nav mesh surface. And over here we can find this bake option. Now, if we want to see that it's actually baked, we can also enable the gizmos and we can see that right now it's still not blue, but when we click on bake and we wait a few seconds, everything becomes blue and it means that this terrain is now walkable. We also set it to be walkable. And now if we run the game, it should move our unit on this terrain. Now at the moment, we can see that the camera is very far in the sky. So we do want to make it a bit closer so we can see the unit. So let's just change these values to about 50 and just make it a bit closer to our unit. Obviously we're not going to touch this angle, but we're going to place it somewhere over here. 
So let's say 0, 20, and 30. And now if we run the game, we can click anywhere on the ground and it will move the unit to this position. Now, if we had multiple units, it would move all of them. But of course, this is not how it should work in an RTS game. We should be able to select the unit that we want to move. So in the next episode, we're going to deal with the selection of the units. So only the selected units are going to move. And to prove this, I'm going to simply control D, duplicate all of these units. I'm going to move them with this offset. And now all of them have this movement script. So if I click over here, they will all move to the same position. So all of this is going to have to go through a fine tuning, but we can see that all of them are moving to the same point because they all have this unit movement script. And in the next episode, we're going to make sure that only the selected units are going to move when we click, because that's the way it works in an RTS game. So that's all for this episode. I don't want to make these episodes too long. I just want to stick with one feature, one small thing, and this way I can make more episodes that are going to be lighter, shorter. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you like this content, if you're still not a follower of this channel. This is what keeps me motivated. You can also leave a like, you can ask questions in the comment section. So I'll see you next time.